Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at testing, specifically testing whenever we have some dependencies that we need to stub or mock. So as you can see here, we have a function called get to do by ID, and this function is making a call out using the request module to an API. And this API is getting a to do, which has the ID of whatever we pass into the function. And then we're just returning a promise which resolves to this to-do. So, which will look something like this. So here we're making a call out to this API. We're looking for a to-do with an ID of one, and it's returning that. It has a user ID, an ID, a title, and a completed. And then our test file, we can see we have a describe, which is describing, we just have the name of the function, and we have an it, which is saying we're gonna test getting a to-do with an ID of one. We're calling the function, passing in one, and then we're checking what it resolves to, and we're checking that that object has an ID which equals one. If we run this test, we can see it's passing. By the way, if you want to set all this up the same, uh, we have some dev dependencies. We have chai, mocha, request, and cinnamon. And our test script is just mocha test.js. So we're just running the test on this one file. Nice, so this test is working, and this is great. But we have an issue. This function has a dependency. It relies on this API working, and us having access to this API. So what happens if we turn our network off? and we run the test again. You can see now, oh, the test is failing. Because we don't have network, how are we gonna access this API? So this is an issue for our test. Our test is saying that this function isn't working, even though the function itself is working. It's the dependency that we don't have access to because we have no network. So how do we fix this? What we need to do is remove our reliance on this dependency, and we can do this by stubbing request.get. To do that, we're going to use a library called synon or synon. So we're going to require it here. And we also need to require the thing that we're going to stub, which is the request object. Nice, so we have sign on and request. And now we need to, in our, we need to add a before function, which is just like a setup. I'm just gonna make it an hour function. And we're gonna say, what do we need to do in the before? We need to use sign on. We need to stub the request object. We're gonna stub the get function on this object. What are we gonna do? We're gonna say that it yields null, null, then we're going to say json.stringify, something with an id of 1. So this yields basically means that whenever request.get is called, the callback of this function is going to be provided with these arguments. So this would look something like this. So request.get, request string, it's going to be provided with these. So this is basically what's happening. And then here we're using the third thing, which is body, and we're going to parse it. So that's nice. So now that this is done, we can add a semicolon there, and we can run this test again. Now you can see it's passing. Even though we have no network, because we're still being request.get, it isn't actually making the call out to the API. We're just saying, okay, whenever this is called, we want to just give your call back these arguments. This is working, really nice. So what else can we test? Well, we know that whatever is returned has an ID, a title, and a completed, so we can add that in. So we're just gonna create another it. We're gonna say to do has title and completed. So we're going to call the same thing, 
this time instead of expecting the ID to equal one, we're going to say to do dot to dot have dot property title. So this is saying we're expecting this to have a property of title. If we save that, run our test again, we can see it's going to fail because we're expecting this object to have a property title, which it doesn't, but we can give it that. So we basically want this stub to act as much like the actual API as we can. So we can just say title to do title. If we save, run the test again, we can see that now it passes. We can also add the same in for the completed field. Run our test, we can see that it's failing. So we do this just to see that we're not getting a false positive. So we know that our code is actually working and the test isn't just passing all the time. So we can say completed, and I think it's just a Boolean. Yeah. So we wanna give it the same thing, just a Boolean. So we save that, run our test again. Um, field, what's wrong here? Oh yeah, property, this should just be completed. Cool, so if we run our test again, we can see that, yeah, it's passing, nice. So another thing that you'll notice about this is how much quicker it is. So because we're stubbing request.get, it isn't actually making the call out, which obviously takes some time. So with the stub, all these tests are taking 31 milliseconds. If we turn our network on again and remove the stub and wait for our Wi-Fi to come, run our test again, we can see that now it's passing, but the whole thing is taking 252 milliseconds. So nearly 10 times as much time. If we add the stub back in again, we can see it's gonna turn from 252 the whole way down to 30, which is really nice. Okay, so now that we've tested the positive cases, whenever we have a to-do, we're gonna test a negative case. So how are we gonna do that? Well, first of all, I guess a good thing to do would be check what is actually returned when we have a negative case. So if we put in here ZZZ, uh, we can see, okay, it's just returning an empty object. Nice, so we can do, copy this describe, paste it in here. Um, we just want to have one it. We're just gonna say to do with this ID does not exist. Um, and here, we can actually add in uh, to do exists in our describe just to describe what these tests are doing and here we can say to do does not exist uh, nice it's just really nice to have these describes to show what's actually going on in the tests so now that we know that if the to do doesn't actually exist it returns an empty object Let's do the same thing here. So we can see that now we're providing the callback with an empty object. If we run our test, we can see it's gonna fail. Oh, okay. So this is failing because we're attempting to wrap get, which is already wrapped. This is something I forgot to do. So in our setup, we're stubbing this, but we also need to tear it down. So in our after, we need to restore this function because we're basically trying to stub it twice, which we can't do, obviously. So we need to say request dot get dot restore. And this should fix this error. Run test. Okay, nice. So this error is gone. Um, we're just going to use this after our next test because it's just good practice. These tests should be able to run in any order and not rely on each other completely independent. This is the purpose of unit testing. Nice, so now we can see expected undefined to equal one. This is because this test is saying that our ID is still gonna equal one. We need to change this. So we're giving it something that probably won't return anything. We'll just return an empty object. We can say expect to do dot ID to equal undefined. If we run our test again, now it's passing. Okay, nice. This has been stubbing 
our dependencies using cinnamon. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.